Once upon a time, there was a man who conquered the hearts of not one, but two queens with his music, who was hailed the greatest musical phenomenon since Mozart. Yes, on this episode of Who is Romania, I'm going to tell you about Georgi Enescu, one of the world's finest composers, a genius, the times described as the soul of Romanian music. His life story reads like a novel. Prodigy child born in 1881 in the small Romanian village of Leven. Inescu was the alchemist who turned his country's beautiful raw folk music into exquisite internationally renowned composition. Romania has long been the home of vibrant Romani folk songs. Imagine it, floating in the air around Inescu's local home, rich, untamed. By the age of three at a fair, Inescu had been captivated by the Roma and their songs. A year later, like them, he was playing the violin by ear, and by the age of five, writing his first musical composition. Inescu was on track to become the youngest student ever admitted to the Vienna Conservatory. Austrian Emperor Franz Joseph was suitably impressed by this precocious talent. But his dream was to conquer France, and it didn't take long to come true. In Paris, one of the world's most prestigious orchestras played his first mature musical composition, Poème Romain, Poema Romana. Achingly beautiful. France went wild. Inescu, age 16, had arrived on the international scene. Back home, Romania was quick to pounce on this national asset especially their royal family. Poet Queen Elizabeth took him under her wing. He was a regular in her artistic salons, where she cast her eccentric eye across a room chock full of young talent. The First World War saw his stock rise again. The country was savaged by invading armies and typhus, and Inescu's music emerges pitch perfect. English-born Queen Marie noted how he performed to the wounded. She wrote, he played divinely, it was hardly bearable. Inescu shared his music like medicine. He raised money for the Red Cross from the moment Romania entered the war, touring hospitals with his magical violin. The government wanted to send him to New York to play for his country's cause. But according to Marie, Inescu was too in love to leave Romania. He had his eyes firmly fixed on her entitled, glamorous, married friend, Princess Maruca Cantacuzino. They married in 1937 after a long, passionate love affair. The relationship was never plain sailing, but Maruca proved a phenomenal muse for the man whose music put Romania on the map. His best work he'd begun way back in 1910. Set to a French libretto by Edmund Flegg, Inescu's only opera, Oedipe, Oedipus, didn't have its world premiere until 1936 in Paris, when a 20th century masterpiece had been born. It's subsequently been staged all over the world, including the Royal Opera House in London. It's unique, covering the entirety of Oedipus's life from birth to death. As far as I'm concerned, this is Inescu at his very best. But of course, that's a matter of musical taste. As far as his best known work goes, that's easier. It's his two Romanian rhapsodies, Rhapsody Romani. They are the very essence of his homeland put to music. Vivid, fresh, spontaneous, tinglingly good. Those two pieces are in the repertoire of almost every major orchestra, and rightly so. Of course, for the great man himself, they were just a few tunes thrown together without thinking. Tunes that won a standing ovation in Bucharest and New York. His music speaks for itself. Inescu was a composer and a performer playing the violin and the piano. But as well as that, he was also a brilliant teacher and mentor. American-born Yehudi Menuhin, the 20th century's most famous violinist, described Inescu 
as the most extraordinary human being and the absolute by which he judged all others. Aged just 10, Menuhin never forgot witnessing Inescu playing perfectly from memory a violin sonata he'd just heard Ravel perform. Like the local Roma who inspired him, Inescu didn't bother with sheet music. Towards the end of Inescu's life, Romania's trajectory was a painful one. In old age, he ended up abandoning Soviet-occupied Romania, moving to Paris, where crippled with back pain in a room that was just big enough for a bed and a piano, he died in 1955, aged 73. He ended life poor, but his legacy was so rich. Great musical feats that still sound as fresh as a spring day in the Romanian mountains are celebrated at the annual Giorgio Inescu Festival. It's one of the biggest classical music competitions in Eastern Europe and really worth the trip. But if you're stuck in Britain, there's no need to miss out. The Inescu Concert Series is hugely popular. It's organised by London's Romanian Cultural Institute and the Inescu Society. Let the band play on.